can you tell the people more about the Save Our Stages tour and why it's even necessary? Yeah, so what we're doing is, um, you know, with everything going on since the beginning of COVID, the music industry has been one of the hardest hit industries, um, especially someone that comes from a background of being a lighting designer um, of about 12 years and owning a music venue for the last five. It's really important to me to fight for this cause of raising awareness for smaller venues because even with funding that is available, independent music venues are one of the last ones to receive funding because they have a full staff. You know, they're not operating at all. Like a lot of these venues are lucky enough to be able to serve food and beer, but a lot of them are just remain closed and they have nothing coming in. And that's where I was just like, you know what? I have to do something for these people, especially seeing all of my friends and family that are in the music industry suffering. Even if I can raise a couple of bucks for them to, you know, buy a meal or to help with a bill that's hanging over their head or virtually anything that can just contribute a little bit is what my mission is about. So by spreading the awareness across the country, um, you know, this helps with, you know, hopefully inspiring other people in those neighborhoods to be like, oh, you know, I didn't realize that my neighbor has been suffering the way that they have been. Maybe we can do something to collaborate with them. You know, it's just little things that I'm hoping that might trigger some more awareness for people. Um, but what we're doing is selling these SOS coffee blend bags that we made. And 20% of those proceeds are donated to venues, promoters, organizations, and festivals um, from all over the country. You can support it digitally by buying a bag online. Um, and again, 20% of that goes to an independent music venue if you use their code. So for example, like Spirit in Pittsburgh, they have their own code, it's just Spirit. Or Drusky Entertainment, it's Drusky. Um, we're also working with venues like 930 Club in DC and the Ardmore in Philly. So we have a reach, a decent amount around, but I'm still doing a lot of outreach to contact with more venues to see if they're interested and being a part of this because like all I'm doing is just trying to raise some funds to help people out. And all you have to do is share the graphic with your code on it. And at the end of the month, hopefully I raise you a couple of bucks that can help you in any sort of way. Um, and then it, it's also cool because a lot of people don't know how to, you know, like contribute to their local venues because they don't have, ways of selling tangible products right. so by having this coffee it's a tangible product that i can help push some funds that way and you know you can drink this coffee and feel good that it's supporting that venue and it is amazing i have it every morning so uh i can i can vouch Thank for you. the uh the quality of the coffee is legit for sure um, how many venues do you think that you have uh, kind of like on your roster, you'd say right now? Um, probably about 20. Um, and this is like the whole reason I started this was to help local independent Pittsburgh venues. But I was like, wait, I can do this for any venue because it's just online, you know, and I plan on doing this tour to like stop at those venues and help raise more funds for them because a lot of this tour so far. So we started in San Diego and um, it was at the oddities and curiosities expo. Um, so what we did there was sell those bags and then I kept it in a pot uh, that we raised and the next venue that we went to, which was Alex's bar in Long Beach, you know, it was a windy day. It was cold. So the turnout wasn't like the best that we expected, but you know, it doesn't matter because we're still out there. We're still doing something. And the money that I raised from the Audis and Curiosities Expo. And then the following day I was at the fourth horseman, which is an awesome like museum pizza shop metal it's so cool we were meant to be together <laughs> <laughs> and like the money i raised from there i combined the two and then gave it to alex's bar so like to hand over like donation money that i made for a venue owner is like the most rewarding thing in the entire world like it 
felt so good. It brought a tear to my eye. I was just like, this is what I've raised for you so far. Hopefully it helps. And he was like, thank you so much. Like, you know, and again, like it's just the reward of feeling that I'm doing some good. Right. When you were booking, um, are, are a lot of your dates with the, uh, oddities and curiosities expo or are you just, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so those are our major dates. So that kind of decides on what venues I hit up around that city. So like the next city that I'm going to, well, first I'm going to Ohio when I come back to hit up a couple of my friends venues, which is West Side Bowl in Youngstown and the Foundry in Cleveland. So after this, I'll be in Ohio and then like a week and a half, I'll be home in Pittsburgh, kind of like settling up and like getting revamped. And then uh, we'll be leaving for Knoxville, Tennessee. Nice. So I'm trying to figure out more venues or breweries or small businesses that are willing to host me so I can just continue to do what I do for this uh, this entire mission. Is this or is anybody else kind of doing what you're doing? Like uh, anybody that's kind of involved with like oddities and curiosities or or is anybody else in that expo kind of sharing in what you're doing? Or is this just kind of like your lone trek, like your lone like mission that you put on your back? Yeah, this is just this is just me knowing like I I've toured, you know, when I was younger with bands and like, I know how to live on the road and having a good friend with me who also lives on the road and understands, you know, like having someone with you and how important it is to like keep each other, you know, safe and responsible. Um, You know, that's one thing you have to keep in mind. And on top of that, like, no one else is traveling right now. And I know it's scary for me. I think of it. And like for a lot of people that are concerned with the pandemic, but no one else is going out there and doing this. So I feel like it's a big part of me to just try because you only live once you only have one opportunity. And if you have the opportunity, you always take it. And that's how I live my entrepreneurial life is just like when an opportunity arises, you take it. If you fail, so what, do something different, take your time and it will come to you. 